Aphorisms It all comes down to this choice. Live your dreams or live other people's dreams. The bitterness of a poor quality woman is remembered far longer than the sweetness of how easy it was to get her. Keep your standards up. Aim high. The difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is this. The former invests his time while the latter spends his time. Most young people don't realize that they are at a golden moment to plant seeds of talent to harvest throughout their lives. Some think, when you get older, it gets harder. That's only if you spend rather than invest. If you invest your time, life keeps getting easier and more fun. The more divided a man is between his dreams and self, the more he will point to how nice he is, how intellectual he is, and unceasingly inform us on how rotten the world is. Philosophy is the refuge for those who refuse to be flesh and blood. Who are the truly unhappy males? It is those who live for women's desire. These include the nice guys, the players, and anyone who dresses, talks, and even puts their profession at what women want. These guys have no sense of self when a woman stands before them. Don wanting works best when you don't think about it too much. Unlimited opportunities with women are just as frustrating as no opportunities. The nice guy and the lady killer will end up with the same frustration. The only cure is to create your own world, your own standards, your own life, and bring women into your world, rather than be sucked into their world. When you see a metrosexual, call him Princess. That is the correct name for such creatures. Men and women fail in their relationships usually because they think they ought to act in some type of way to gain the other person's favor. It never works. And even if it did work, you still aren't compatible. It shows that the person is scared of their own world or lack of one. Some people think women are weak and stupid. I disagree strongly. And you know what? So do you. The reason why there is a forum is precisely because women were stronger than we thought. The fulfillment of your own sexuality is nothing less than your battle for existence. Consistency is the most important thing to success in anything. Some say, Poo poo! I only asked out one girl this week! I come to this board and hear a guy asking out a hundred chicks! Stop it. It is more important to make a habit. Any fool can go talk to a hundred chicks in a week, such as at a large gathering or something, but very few can keep it consistent. Even when you ask out one girl a week, that is 52 girls in a year. That is more girls asked out in a year than most guys ask out in a lifetime. The consistency is all. There is no method except yourself. Women occupy a place in thought and action which is unique and essential to man and the world. Why on earth would they reject the precious gifts nature has given them to imitate models of male domination? The genius of every woman is to love, to protect and to nourish the lives entrusted to her, and to support the full development of life in others. Ignoring the truth of sexuality is ignoring the truth of life. Break sexuality's cycle and so end up in a life of utter collapse. Dreams are more powerful than facts. Imagination is stronger than knowledge. The myth more powerful than history. And passion will always go further than experience. The final word to the book of science is that the world can be made to whatever we want that the real world is not outside you, but within, which gives us all the power to begin the world over again. Mediocrities avoid risk the way alcoholics avoid a cure. Most people live in a web of narcissism and they have different strategies to achieve it, which people mistake for different lives.
From the intellectual who reads solely to stroke his ego to orgasmic revelation, to the player who sticks his pride in so many chicks, to girls who pop themselves with cherry-like husbands and kids just to make the neighbors jealous, the strategies differ. The narcissism is the same. Ladies, if you only have one hour left to live, spend it with the nice guy, for that hour will seem like an eternity. Manners for men. Direction of masculine strength, not the denial of it. The difference between mistakes and experience is this. Mistakes are made when one has not achieved his desires, whereas experience is made when the desires are achieved. If you still are making mistakes, keep making them, and at some point all those mistakes will morph into experience. Show me an unsuccessful person in life, and I will show you a person who thinks they are perfect. Planned perfection? Pah. Give me the heartaches and shocks that flesh is heir to. No more will I bear Lady Patience digging her spurs into me to slow down and watch myself. This perfection is an Athena child grown directly from your head. Every third thought shall be my grave. Older women are easiest to have casual affairs with. Youth is a wizard's staff, and without it she can cast no spells. Relationships of the new man and the new woman are two androgynous beings swapping a phallus. I'll be the man for today, honey. Okay, dear, but I get the phallus Thursday for a meeting at work. Faith in the glory of women is a substitute for the lost faith we have in ourselves. The burning honor that men feel duty-bound toward women is attaching our drowning selves to a passing raft. What looks like nobility is a way of holding on for dear life. Take away the honor a man feels he owes to the woman, and you leave his life puny and meaningless. Exchanging self-centeredness for chivalry, or selflessness, men gain enormously in self-esteem. The vanity of the chivalrous, even those who proclaim utmost humility, outdoes the vanity of the self-centered. Sexuality extends outside the bedroom. Did sexuality exist in films of the 50s and downward? There you find the greatest depictions of romance, of how the tension builds and builds just for a kiss. Of plot, epics, and of men, John Wayne. Imagine if people today externalized their sexuality outside in the same way. Rather than cocooning our sexuality in the bedroom, it would now be part of every waking moment. Let society become sexualized, as opposed to eroticized, once again. Reveal a man's perspective on woman and reveal his perspective on life. Men conquer worlds. Women conquer men. Listen very carefully to the words women use when they talk about men, especially among themselves. It is like their conversation is revolving around domestic appliances. Women and finance are not two, but one. Why do people remain scared their entire lives? Because what you call fear, they call virtue. This applies with women as well as with money. It is virtue in being chivalrous. It is fear that is behind that chivalrousness. It is virtue in saving and living cheaply. It is fear of investing and living well that is behind the saving and cheapness. Why do older women despise beautiful young women? It is because they have the potential to be very rich. Older women never despise young, ugly women or married, beautiful women attached with regular Joe Schmo husbands. Education used to be attached to sexuality. That to be educated was to be a man. The university used to be mankind's armory against nature. Mathematics? How far? How fast? How long? What shape? Biology? What relationship does this form of nature have with this form? Art? Reflecting nature back at itself. 
history, chronicling nature's path, and law, how to deal with human nature, including philosophy and poetry. The university has turned into an expensive adolescent summer camp. Now education being desexualized is pure trivia. You bubble in circles in a Scantron test sheet, regurgitate the book or paraphrase the professor's words back to him in an essay or memorize phylum orders and species of taxonomic nonsense for scientific labs. You procrastinate when studying because you know that it is not knowledge, just trivia. Compare that to your eagerness to learn the information here. Here there is no trivia, as everyone knows the knowledge is connected to nature and to life. This sense of decline in education would be corrected if the departments, especially the humanities, stopped being trivia, stopped being political, and embraced the warrior spirit against nature that the fields originated with. Beautiful women and romanticism are like oil and water. They do not mix. Choose one. Too many people think it is AFC to fall in love. If you fall in love, cherish it. I would give up years of countless stupid chicks just to feel that way about a girl again. Remember this saying? You can remove the girl from Louisiana, but you cannot remove Louisiana from the girl. You can bring a foreign woman from South America or Asia into America, but that is like putting good food into an unclean dish. The food eventually spoils. Many find a woman or women as a substitute for achievement. This is female thinking, that the union means your life is complete. Others think the Don Juan ends as soon as he gets a girl. It doesn't. You must prove your worth every day in life. Childhood is over. When you think you are achieving things because you have a woman or women, you stunt life. Take a young man who is skinny, shy, isolated, and a dork. Fat girls keep pestering him. Girls set him up with women no one else wants. Yet he dreams of life, of joy, of strength, of new realms beyond this one. Fat and ugly women disappear as if he simply changed clothing. Sun-like, he becomes a world everyone revolves around as he is now seen as interesting, fun, and muscular. Rather than park his life and watch everyone zoom by or drive a snail's pace for fear of risk, he now lives life in the fast lane. Boredom is where all evils enter the world. And when a person is bored, he is bored with himself. Interesting people in their daily lives are never bored as they find everything interesting. Women who balk at a gentleman will lick the boot of an asshole. In high school, you thought women would mature and stop liking the jocks or jerks. In college, you thought women would mature and dislike the frat boys, sport guys, and start to be attracted to nice guy. In your thirties, you thought that women were finally wisening up. No, women didn't mature. They just ran out of Don Juans. No matter what her age or relationship status, a woman will look at those guys and lust. Women indefinitely remain women. Since the changes and joys of life's arc, babies, family, courtship, marriage, have no role for the intelligentsia, it is no surprise that anti-sexuality flourishes among intellectuals. The greatest dupe with women and life is not the janitor, not the nice guys, it is the professor cocooned in doctorates against life. In ages past, women did not own their sexuality. Their hair was hidden, they were fully clothed. It was because female sexuality was seen as powerful and controlling. So when rape became the man's fault, more and more skin was revealed. A few men have fought back with embracing their own sexuality. Three choices. One, be powerless to female sexuality. Two, cover the women up to keep peace of mind. Three, answer back with your own sexuality. They have chosen the third choice. Now there is a problem with women raping men. 
Usually this is done through fat women deliberately getting the guy drunk and taking advantage. A friend of mine was raped this way, but he refused to press charges because he didn't want it to become public. I almost was raped myself, and have had female friends warn me that women will try to rape me. Since rape is now seen as the fault of the men, will women be seen as rapists themselves? Oh, this will drive feminists nuts. Man. 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 In three words I have summed up the appetite of history. When a woman does not mind her own business, it is because it is not worth minding. She takes her mind off her meaningless affairs by minding other people's business. So she creates dramas, wants to control your life, looks for a guy to cure the boredom she has in life. This type of woman must be avoided at all costs. Romanticism is the enemy. It destroys lives, makes people get together who shouldn't, and makes the pursuit of a lover more acceptable than the company of the lover. There are several strands of romanticism. First is the envy strand. Guys want a certain girl, or girls want a certain guy, solely to have everyone envy them. People want others to envy them because they know they have no real worth to themselves. Second is the star-crossed lover strand. Girls or guys will go over the top with the two cherries stuck together mantra of love. They do this because they have no sense of self. Third is the romanticism of sex as an achievement. These guys or girls will believe they are the first ones in history to discover the joys of sex and are stuffed with the words of liberating, new, revolution, and freedom. Yet the result is that they end up less free, not doing anything new, tightening chains around their sorry life, and cannot face the fact they are centuries behind the times. Television is for women and losers. Some guys look for a girlfriend as incentive for them to get a life, as someone to push them to get rich, and for someone to make themselves happy. These fools do not even know what women are. They think women are some type of genie that grants them wishes, such as wealth, popularity, and happiness. Now we know the convoluted brain where such shows like Bewitched and I Dream of Genie came from. Often a lady asks, If I get fat, my pokey wookie, will you still love me? And I reply, My dear, Aristotle defines love as founding friendship on beauty. If there is no beauty to base friendship on, then according to Aristotle, there can be no love. And what can she say to that? Intelligence is not conscience. Intelligence is not virtue. Intelligence is not character. Intelligence is not morality. O oh, intellectuals, who find themselves so brilliant that they think they ought to outshine all stars, they do not notice their own contradictions. It is impossible to debate with intellectuals because with them you can come to no truths. They are the living contradictions. Ever notice how when driving, a car that is slower than us is an idiot, while a car going faster is a maniac? It is the same with women. A guy who has more women than you will be seen as reckless, while a guy with less women will be seen as an idiot. Life is always better than non-life. Always. When a woman talks to a man, she is thinking of his future, his earning potential. And when a man talks to a woman, he is thinking of her past. How old is she? Her weight? Her history? It just shows you that guys are free to make mistakes, as women will look at your future, not your past. Women condemning is far easier than self-realization. Often a woman's beauty will echo your finished world. The unfinished world will get unfinished women. Feminism is but one of the many arrows of the modern bow all aimed at targeting sexuality. 
Those who hold hatred at differences between men and women hold hatred at humanity. They literally despise being human. Women ought to look at the success of feminism as its ultimate refutation. Feminism holds that men and the evil sexuality men impose on women ran the world in a vast patriarchy. If this was true, feminism wouldn't have a chance or at least experience fierce opposition from patriarchy. Yet historically, feminism's biggest critics were women. Men passively accepted it. It shows that while men may conquer the world, women conquer men. Men's problem today is being too nice, too sappy. By letting feminism thrive, men show that we want to please women and that men are more influenced by women than feminists would dare admit. I would dare say that feminism is the only modern movement that describes men as the way they would love to think of themselves, as dangerous, conquering rulers. In reality, men are delegated in Womaniverse the same status as donkeys. The cutest, hard-working donkey wins. Theory. Endless theory. I want to move to this land of theory the intellectuals emerge from. For in theory, everything is correct. We project ourselves onto the world. If the world becomes cruel or evil, it is time to examine ourselves. People love optimistic people. Look at those who write books on becoming optimistic. They become rich because optimism isn't a natural state. The politicians elected usually are the more optimistic ones. No women will want an unhappy guy. She has enough problems already. Women fear being alone more than being harmed. Women will sit and stew. Your job is to grab her by the hand and say, let's go. Embrace action and women will follow. How do you get rid of lustful women? You laugh now, but eventually you'll find these skags trying to be nice to you, to get close to you, to be a pest, and in some cases get you drunk and rape you. After all, the more disinterested we are to women, the more she accepts that as a challenge and pursue. These seven words cut to the chase and have served me well. You just aren't woman enough for me. But Pook, I don't get it. Don't worry. They will. Women know exactly what that means. Women love the working man. They love to see him work. Women are still the little girls they used to be with the addition of milk sacks and fat deposits. If you keep this in mind, you will do all the things correctly with them. Between the ages of five and twenty, women did not suddenly become mysterious or bizarre. She just got more estrogen. How do you deal with five-year-old girls is how you deal with twenty-five-year-old girls. Those that seek only power over the opposite sex will never achieve love. Those that embrace power over the opposite sex do so because they fear their lack of power over themselves regarding the opposite sex. This is why the bitter nice guy snaps into a full-fledged player. Women will never stop surprising you. Do not underestimate the fairer sex. Women are more likely than men to use you for sex or for anything else. They manipulate men through their vanity. A humble man is invincible against women. The problem with virgins, both men and women, is that they think their virginity alone means they are honest, wonderful, virtuous, and a wonder of the world. Virginity has no connection with honesty or can substitute virtue itself. It is no wonder, then, that the virgin is alone because he or she is filled with self-love. Intense self-love is the most vile sin of all. It is in this that the whore can become more pure than the virgin. You are not free to be nothing. Nature has given you a gender, one you did not choose. You must act like a man, look like a man, and be a man. 
If you refuse to do so, you will not attract the women you want, and nature will burn your life with melancholy. The very root of the anti-sexuality that has been sprung on us is trying to free us from gender. To be human is to be free. To be free from being human is to be a slave. Feminists find themselves as the new agents of liberty, but they are forgetting that the basis of liberty is the law of nature. Many virgins here believe that infinite access to sex will give them freedom. It won't. The claws of nature will just dig in deeper. The only path for freedom is to understand how nature works and be able to work inside its system, to be able to control your life the way you want. Women do not deceive men. We use women to deceive ourselves. We no longer know the difference between sex and stocks. Did Pook say sex and stocks? Yes. People view sex like some medium of exchange, something the more they make with a person, the more votes and control they ought to get. Contrast this to stocks, where people buy hoping the stocks get pregnant and reproduce. If only there was a third gender to referee. Perhaps that's what the elderly did as they became more androgynous with their courtships, rituals, and bundling. Guys who easily deceive themselves will find no difficulty in being deceived, used, and corralled by women. We all have failings in life. The losers are those who seek women as a balm for their personal failings. If I marry her, my life will have purpose and be complete. The result is a nagging, frustrated wife. The point is that we helped create the nagging wife. She didn't come from nowhere. I have never looked at my own progression into Don Juan as the adding of game or skills or techniques. It was like I became more human. If you compare a nice guy and a Don Juan, what is the real difference? Is it really that one has game and the other doesn't? Or is one more human than the other? When a lady views the nice guy and the Don Juan, who will she be more comfortable with? The humanized one. The unfinished men, nice guys, are meant for the unfinished women, the fat ones. We are all tossed into this sea of nature. Many don't understand swimming, so they climb out and analyze everything and shout how wrong and alien everything is. These are your philosophers. The true person of reading is not the intellectual who perverts works into authorities. It is the child getting lost in the story, oblivious of authorities themselves. In the same way, a Don Juan is one who gets lost in the joy with women and life, not someone who writes pointy-worded manifestos on the subject trying to become an authority. Such a person is more of a philosopher than a Don Juan. Many people live through life backwards. At the threshold of youth, they look on older age with disgust, fear, and boredom. I must have my fun now, they say. So off they go, making famine of time where abundance lies, spending their time rather than investing it. When they get older, their future is exactly as they thought. Since they planted no seeds of talent or skill, they had nothing to harvest, so their happiness starved. With this future, they think they were right because their future came as predicted. So then they spread the error by advising youth to act like they did. Others have been able to checkmate time. They see it that as one gets older, life gets easier. So they work hard in their youth, carving out a comfortable place in the world. And as time passes, their work grows easier as does their fame. Since they invested their time rather than spent it, talent, skill, intelligence, and ability grow in abundance. In this life there is no real decay. It is the Don Juan that is timeless. What is his origin? He is in literature, history, plays, and has become a legend. It is the Don Juan's imagination that the world and women find so fascinating. 
No one ever wrote an opera on the nice guy or an epic on the philosopher. Every woman to me is a portal of discovery. They are all emissaries of nature, delivering you news on how life works. To many men, anything is easier, from nuclear physics to climbing the tips of mountains, than dealing with a woman he truly loves. Why, with her, he will be unable to hide from himself. Women are at their loudest when they're lonely. This is also true with dogs. Have you ever noticed how some people spend their lives trying to get loved more by strangers than their community? It is like they desire to be some celebrity with no real friends, but with fans. This celebrity lifestyle ends up fake. When you hear of singers or actors getting busted for drugs, it often isn't because that is who they are, but they're trying to live up to this persona. If a celebrity warns friends, when they meet, not to tell the paparazzi, and the paparazzi show up, who told? Probably the celebrity himself. Their lives are a script. Compare the above to Don Juan. Many foolishly think that Don Juan is the celebrity with the women and that female strangers will instantly respond to you on the street, on the elevator, or wherever. This is a silly life, as all these strangers will never really give a damn about you as you start to do stranger and stranger things to fit into this persona. Don't forget your own community. Rather than go for instant hookups at bars and clubs, try expanding your social circle. Eventually you'll get circles and larger circles and even larger circles of women coming after you. These ladies will tell their lady friends about you and the effect just ripples. Even Bond, James Bond, admits to doing this. This increasing of social circle, of your community, is far, far more rewarding than being an introvert who practically costumes his physical appearance, his social self, his emotional self, and, dare I say, his spiritual self, for some dumb female stranger who wouldn't care if he dropped dead the next day. Don Wanning is easy when it's a way of life. Still unconscious, you lie in a coma in a hospital where the real battle is being fought inside you. The doctors stand around, watching. You go to work, go to school, feed, sleep, perhaps sex here and there, but nothing different from the routine of a beast. The doctors are furiously trying to reconnect the currents of your mind to your body. Actually, they desperately are trying to reconnect your life to your soul. No one mentions this, but you know it too well. Your life depends on the choices you make now in your youth. What you do today echoes a lifetime. Melting, melting, melting. Look around you. Everything is in a state of decay. Everything, nature and non-nature, is melting. Look at the old. Their flesh is blasted with antiquity even though they try to speak from the scrolls of youth. This way of looking at things makes the world a little bit less opaque. Then you will open up Hamlet and realize why Shakespeare phrased it as that this too, too solid flesh, would melt. Not having any hyper-realities is dangerous. It means you have to be content solely with life which means you have to take risks. Don Juan or not Don Juan? Since people drift toward less pain rather than more pain, it follows that they would rather create a mental world where they could be right, not to Don Juan. Oh, I'm not her type. This is not a good time. She wouldn't like me. All women here have diseases. This is how we guys get detached from reality into a mental womb. It is good for young men to read a post full of aphorisms. Here we encounter the most popular fiction in our era. Having a woman equals success with women. It is not considered sufficient that we be successful in our own dreams and goals. We must have a woman no matter what. 
Nor is it sufficient that we pick the women we want. No, we must always have a woman, even the most mediocre one, else people question our manhood. It is not enough for one to develop his faculties for physical, intellectual, creative life. He must above all have a woman. This fiction defines a man as anything having a woman, thus keeping males forever mediocre. Technique is nothing. Communication is everything. The techniques that supposedly work are nothing more than good communication of your desires and intention. If Schwarzenegger was a small, wimpish, but popular celebrity, would he have resonated as much? No, Pook! Why not? The intellectuals tell us it is purely because he is a Hollywood star. He is the Terminator! Ah, if you compare Schwarzenegger to Davis or any other politician, they all look girly and androgynous to beefed-up Arnold. But no one really seems to care what issues Arnold has. Wouldn't it be safe to say that Arnold's sheer masculinity, in other words, sexuality, is the big attraction, especially in the sexuality dead world of politics? This just shows how much society craves sexuality and how much of it is lacking today. Virgin is a weasel word. The atmosphere of such word has always been the same. A virgin is pure, innocent, and so on, but a strict definition defies it solely to physicality and that of the genitals. A woman may do everything except slip a penis in her vagina and may call herself a virgin, yet she is not pure, innocent, and such. The virgin definition is too limited. Are there guys that have had sex yet are blind to sexuality? They are still AFCs and quite innocent and naive. Then there are guys who may not have had sex but are fully aware of sexuality, have been stung by it in consciousness, understand and play the part. Which of the two is more of a virgin? Which of the two is innocent? This just shows that our words and labels sometimes are not precise enough to aptly describe nature. How absurd is this sentence? Deliver me the philosophies necessary to make me laugh. What? We say to such a person, No, there is no philosophy that can teach you to laugh. And they respond with, Tell us the twelve-step program that teaches one to laugh. And we say to them, there is no how-to in order to get you to laugh. At this they grow angry and rattle. You deliberately hide the information we seek. You hide your thoughts and keep them closed to our world. And we reply, We do not close the world to you. You close the world to you. Do you want to laugh? Look in the mirror. And on and on this goes. Now replace the word laugh with the word Don Juan, and you realize why learning to Don Juan is not like an academic degree. I smell the gassy effects of a holocaust of sexuality. Nazi-like feminists and their foot soldiers, the intellectuals, all believing themselves brilliant and far above mankind, wearing their armbands of degrees and organizations, march women and men to education chambers where philosophical spores are clouded into rooms. Instead of thinking of motherhood, wife, man, warrior, fatherhood, the people think equality, rape, patriarchy sensitivity, and unisex. The schools, a type of concentration camp themselves, have done their work well. Sexuality has been cleansed. The men and women are now androgynous and march forth proudly with their new philosophies, zombie-like. The more of your world that is unleashed, the more order comes to your life. Sexuality, families, and men did not come about because of society. To the contrary, sexuality, families, and men are what made society possible in the first place. What a gem is a woman that can be alone, for she has a soul, a self, 
and essence itself, many women, when alone, cease to exist. Animals can learn. What do they learn? They learn how to become pets. In other words, domestication. A dog does not learn how to become a dog, nor a cat into a cat, or a rabbit into a rabbit. The problem with nice guys is that they keep looking to learn. But you cannot learn to be a man. You just be. All this focus on learning makes the nice guy's destiny to become a pet. The truly smart aren't those who read tons of books and words. The smart are those who can read their own heart and minds. It seems that the most gifted Don Juans were the most miserable failures with women earlier in life. It is like when they found they couldn't have their way, they had to compensate by realizing and cultivating their faculties and talents. This is also true with geniuses. The most virulent feminist I ever met was a male. There was a man who lived his life by what others thought he should do. He was in a nonsense position of a vice president of a bank. He decided once in his life that he would do what he wanted to do. So he quit his job and embraced his dream of being paid to take people fly fishing in a beat-up old pickup truck, I might add. This act of freedom had his wife almost nearly divorce him. This shows that the nice guy is the guy with no soul, no sense of self, nor independent in thought, and certainly not a man. By serving everyone's wishes, he is the manipulated, animated instrument which is Aristotle's definition of a slave. The nice guy desire to merge with a woman is partly a desire to lose himself. The human is caught between his ideal and the world, his dreams and day, his heaven and earth. The passion for evolution models of human courtship and coupling is the desire to jettison off the ideal the dream, the heaven, to cut the cords that lead us up. Only then can one be content with a loveless, mediocre life, since evolution models of humanity revolve around sex and genetic distribution. No one can point out our failed dreams or measure us against others and expose our inferiority. Intellectuals are backwards with sexuality, Education moves forward with more questions, not more answers. It is easy to find someone to have answers for everything. It is hard to find someone questioning his own world. Thus, humility is the vehicle of education. It is extraordinary to understand the ordinary. Some people approach this forum with the nice guy essence still intact and say, Tell us what we must do to get the women. And a cluster of voices flow to say, Improve your voice. Improve your muscles. Improve your confidence. Improve your wardrobe. These are all very fine and good gentlemen, and if the nice guy adopts them, he will certainly be getting a different response. Yet he is still stuck to the forum. In essence, he is still a thing and contains no human uniqueness. This is why I find it impossible to advise someone on what they ought to do. Rather, we can only show how Nietzsche works, and perhaps some examples. If a guy comes here for people to instruct him on how to act, what personality he should have, how to dress, how to talk, and so on, does he remain a guy? He still sounds like a thing with no self-volition. Intelligent people often overvalue intelligence. In fact, they cannot comprehend how intelligence can be overvalued. It is impossible to introduce a more destructive idea than sexuality is evil. It means that all natural actions will be hesitated by philosophic thoughts that families will be shattered on the altar of intelligentsia. People will bump into each other only for sex and become public uteruses and dildos, thus destroying sex by turning it into a mutual masturbation. And the natural harmony of human life will become that of discord and despair. 
the result is a fear society. Don't listen to guys who say they can get all the women but cannot write a coherent paragraph. Stop placing success on the girl. Don't let anything take away from your creative, intellectual, physical, spiritual growth. People asked me, Pook, why do you write these long posts when that time could have been spent to gather more women? Women and my faculties are not two but one. Women who complain of sexual harassment wish it would happen to them. All organisms naturally grow and produce fruit. When you notice someone or yourself going in circles with changes or not bearing any growth, any fruit, whatever philosophies or mindsets bouncing around in the skull is properly called a cancer. It is destroying you from inside out. The greater the writer, the less is his philosophy. Some think sexuality and morality contradict each other. They don't. They reinforce one another. Sexuality is not just lust. It is man. It is woman. It is families. It is the life cycle itself. It is the anti-sexuality crowd that is against distinctions in gender, against man, against woman, against fathers, against mothers, against life itself. Look outside. Notice how bridges gracefully stretch empty abysses to one another. Notice how skyscrapers fly towards the sun. Notice the network of roads and highways, these canals of concrete for our engineered to the nth degree cars. Notice the divinity of the airplanes landing and taking off. Notice the space shuttles piercing the infinite void of nature itself. This is all masculine poetry, and it holds our world together. Take a kid from a poverty-stricken world and bring him to this world and watch him go in awe. How beautiful, he will say, because he, unlike many of the city's inhabitants, understands the value. The philosopher who is rational, academic, and ever thoughtful is just as distorted as the blood-mad, chocolate-filled nice guy. Want to make yourself laugh? Watch an old Superman movie. Clark Kent runs around desexualized, a nerd man. He runs to the phone booth, rips off his shirt to reveal a giant S, and flies around with extreme sexuality. For heaven's sake, he is wearing tights. Superman alone shows that women are attracted not to smarts, not to genius, but only sexuality. Superman's quest to get Lois Lane to love his desexualized state is the wish of every man. The strangest thing has occurred to me on this forum. I came here looking for love, but discovered life. Now, it is not a love for women or women. It is more a love of life. Do you guys feel this way? It is like we have been given a second chance to get life right. A second life as gift. The Greek myth has Pyragmion carve his ideal woman out of stone with her coming to life. In the same way, a carpenter must have the idea of a table before he sets knife to woodblock. Plato encarved entire nations out of people with his thought. In the same way, you will take your blob of flesh and carve out the life you want. As you think, you shall become. How do I judge a woman's character? I see how she treats people who can do nothing for her. This test has never failed me. You guys can sit here and chatter about seductions and sprawling posts that compare yourselves to alpha dogs, wolves, wildebeests, cavemen, and Norwegian rats. I'm going to reside in flesh and blood, those two greasy plains where life forever flows. On another forum, a guy will spot my success with women and write a nice guy manifesto. On another forum, a guy will see me and come up with seductions that I supposedly employed. Yet on another forum, one will see me and say that I am an asshole to women, a jerk, and then the forum will join in chorus, condemning me. Yet on another forum, a guy will see me and write an academic manifesto on the psychological influences bouncing in my head and what I was emitting to get these women. These seductionists, academics, 
philosophers, and in general critics to the world have one thing in common. They must spin out wordy intellectual excuses for why the world is what it is, because they are scared to be flesh and blood. Growth is the evidence of life. You still think sexuality is a mark of depravity and evil? Do you realize how the devil was portrayed in the ancients? Not as a goat with a trident and horns. No, the devil was depicted as an androgynous person, completely sexless. It is sexuality that gives the world its color, the plumage on birds, the dances of wildebeests, the chirping of grasshoppers, and the blossom of flowers. In humans it creates genius. It creates families your entire family line, your descendants, the glory of the home, and keeps your name alive throughout generations. Sexuality is our victory over nature. It is the destiny of the nice guy to believe change is something that happens to us, but the Don Juans know that change is something we make, that the life of the world is not to come from external sources of women, but through himself as the channel. Ambitionless men are those who live like women. Ambitionless women are those who live the equality of men. As society becomes more androgynous, the more sexual intercourse in different positions, styles, and places becomes hyped. This is because, above all, men want to feel like a man, and women want to feel like a woman. When sexuality is outlawed, when men are not allowed to act like men or women to act like women, all focus flows into intercourse. It is said that society is more sexual than before. The error with this statement is that sexual is defined entirely by display and discussion of intercourse. Sexuality includes but is far beyond just sex. People today confuse sexuality with eroticism. If this is true, then society is becoming more repressed sexually. The feminists become the new Puritans, scared that someone somewhere is being male or female. It is a reverse Victorian age. Where the Victorian age would cover up a table leg since it resembled a woman, we are in an age where we re-socialize children for fear they might act like men or women edit out all male pronouns, and consider anything masculine to be rude and anything feminine to be weak. This dry apocalypse of sexuality is the modern crisis that psychologists are trying to figure out. Waste time, and time will waste you. I want you to consider something, that the real world does not exist, that there is only your world. Matter is formless and can only be created through form. To live is to form. Once a man has embraced his sexuality, it is then that he creates woman. Your desire is the spirit that brings women to life in your world. The surest way to make a woman unhappy is to give her everything she wants. I want to add to Commenter Inspector's list. Realize that everything is process, everything is energy, there are no objects, no true identity. Everything is melting into each other. Our eye is too slow to see this. Decay, decay, decay. Nature conspires against us. Her interest is in continuation of the species, never identity. Her quest is to ground you up to raise the next generation. We plow our fields over the bones of the dead. Our thoughts are infinite. Our actions are infinite. The expression, the bridge between these is part of both. When we're gone, all that is left is the expression. Innocence is an icy stasis. Its attractive power is in nature's refusal to let anything get outside her devouring cycle. A man who stays persistently single becomes the public temptation as nature summons up women to break him. Women exist totally in social body, influenced by males of their fathers, brothers, and friends. 
When sexually influenced, the woman separates herself from society and attaches herself egotistically to the male. His dreams become hers. His quests become hers. She reflects him. Thus he will say, Look at how an echo she is to me. She is my soul mate. And she will reflect that sentiment as well. The male ego is fragile and requires daily maintenance, a superiority that marriage brings. In the hardest times, the male will reach for his woman. She, already reflecting him, reminds him of himself. Thus, it gives him the strength to return and keep his path. Later, when asked on his success, he will credit the woman and say that she backed him. How painful will it be when he realizes that almost any woman under his influence would do this? Love involves more pain than pleasure. Luckily, the pleasure is more intense. Women seek justification for their existence on this world. Francis Bacon summed up three ages of woman, the mistress, the companion, and then the nurse. Women define themselves in relation to everything else. She is the eternal harbor that all ships go to in times of restoration and relaxation. Women reflect you, as you think she becomes. The more sexual influence you can have on a woman, the more you can remold her. You can make her exercise, even if it's the last thing she wants to do. Make her enjoy mathematics and quantum physics, and even turn her into a born-again virgin. This feminine remolding is what men mistake for love. Men are divided creatures who want to be social, yet want to be alone to think and live. Women do not have the societal problems men do, for they are always social. The more a woman becomes sexually attached to a guy, the more separated she becomes from society, as his quests, goals, all become hers. Personality is but an expression of sexuality. Thus, one conception of love is one's fullest form of personality. This is why it is observed that opposites attract. Yet it is not merely a combination of opposites, it is a filling of vacuums. Often people become attracted to the very capabilities they themselves do not possess. Far from conquering, the male sees sex more as a metaphysical victory. How often is it that once a man obtains this, that he loses his ambition and drive? This is why goals have to be beyond women. Sometimes males see sex as a type of liberation from the sexual exile we are locked within as women are the gatekeepers and hold all the keys to this promised land. Yet the harder one tries to liberate himself this way, the deeper nature's claws dig in. Soon one becomes the slave to nature. A man who loves like a woman becomes a slave. This is the nice guy. Men change their clothes to match their lifestyles and attitudes. Women change their lifestyles and attitudes to match their clothes. When drinking, the body is smarter than the mind. After a few drinks, the body will go, What is this stuff? What is he doing? Ugh, let's make him dizzy. If more and more drinks keep coming, the body says, Yikes, this stuff keeps coming. Well, out it goes. And the person vomits. If the person tries to outwit his body, he'll attempt to drink a whole lot real fast. The body will cry, What is he doing? I can't tell what's going on. And the body will pull the plug as you pass out. To sit it out appears to be the dominant vote. We have been assigned to our posts of flesh to this age, and look how we squander it. So many say, Oh, if I were only born a woman! How I could have no worries! I could have no troubles! How I could eternally be a child! So many males are turning into females. The wives are dominant. Due to these new dominant women, since there are no men left, their estrogen levels will rise, and with it will be a tilt to more males than females being born in the next generation in order to create more chances of the emergence of men. For this is nature's corrective process. A woman once told me nuggets of truth. Well, first it is absolutely possible for women to love, because the only way they can exist is through other people. 
So when they love a child or love a husband or love their mother or father, what is actually happening is that they are using those other people for their existence. It is only through those relationships do they actually exist. So when a woman says she has an unconditional love for her child, don't believe her. What's actually happening is that she's using that child as she would a new bangle, a way to enhance her position on the planet. Oh, oh, the reply. This is why women spend so much time gossiping on the phone, because they wouldn't exist without that social contact. Children just provide another form of social contact. And the woman answers, Children are just another thing to talk about. Women love to talk, and as you say, it's their connection with the world. It makes them alive. And she goes on, What about single women parents? It's been said that they are just being prepared to wait for that special man to come along instead of just grabbing anyone off the queue. You can see that the government, especially in this country, has taken the place of the husband and provides and protects and supports women and is seemingly doing a mighty fine job for the amount of single parents there are around. Now, does this mean she has changed? That is, has she really become more independent? Has she changed the basis of her psychology? Which is, to my mind, submission? I say no, obviously. If you have a look at her, she's not striving for anything. She goes on her merry way every day, wishing and dreaming the same dreams that she's dreamed for in eternity. And she definitely isn't evolving into an independent, single-minded, self-reliant creature. Endure To live is to fight, for this world is but a hurricane of challenges all aimed at you. If it ever becomes too much, if you get down on your life, you will look for encouragement, and you will not find it. Everyone puts on the appearance that they want the best for you, that they want you to succeed, but in reality, the thing they least want is you to succeed. They want you to fail. When you start to change your life, people will notice it. They will not like it. We all get used to placing people in certain categories. You're showing them that there is more to you than they thought. That instead of letting life define you, you are defining life yourself. You're literally fighting for life, and this makes them uncomfortable because they didn't. And once they realize it, they know it's too late. Endure. All your exes will have one thing in common. They want you to fail. The last thing they want is to run into you later and see you successful. No, they want to see you remain the same or sink lower. Endure. All the girls that shot you down, they want you to fail. A big fear in women is missing the great catch. Give substance to their fear. Endure. At your high school reunion, the ones you knew will come back with secret desires of seeing failures everywhere, even at you. Defy them. Endure. For it is the same for 99% of the people. They get grounded up into conformity and become bewildered as their lives become more and more joyless. They will feel threatened by you. You may even want to stop your metamorphosis by how uncomfortable it is to others you knew, and even for yourself. But those who stop can never realize their dreams, and so can never be Don Juans. The more successful you become in life, the more and more people will despise you. No one despises the innocent nice guy who happily takes orders, but everyone envies the one who knows what he wants and takes it the guy who won't be played, and the guy who manages to unite dream and day. All your married friends, they want you to fail. They will whisper in your ear that you should do like they did. All your friends, they want you to fail. They will confer to you that you ought to shrug off these ideas of yours. Live like us, they will tell you. Most people remain static all their lives, they do not change and cannot change. They are basically the same now as they were five years ago. But you are totally different, for now you have improved and refined yourself while they stayed the same in their vaporous habits. Imagine they are gathering in a circle around you and your life. They are all taking bets on whether you will stop and fail. 
and when you do, they will let out a sigh of relief and say, Thank goodness. People do not want you to succeed, especially people you've known your entire life. They want you to stay the same or fail. Their lives can only succeed by seeing you fail. For nothing can overtake the power of endurance. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated failure. Endurance alone is power ultimate. So endure. We are the sum of our endurance, and we will not let others define us any longer. Being a Don Juan Intermediate commenter Don Juaner said, Tell me, Pook, how long did it take you to turn out to be a successful Don Juan, despite all your setbacks and bumps on the road? It is you guys that see me as some heroic Don Juan crusading through women. In my eyes, I am not a success, and that is why I'm successful. I am literally in awe at the system nature has set up for us. I learn new things every day. There will be no time when you thump your chest and go, I am a Don Juan. You won't be successful with every woman. Anyone honest will admit this. Think of a card game. The cards get reshuffled and dealt out again. You merely get better at the game, more sure, and know what to expect. The next card you flip over may be a two or a five or a ten or a queen. You take it as it comes at you dealing with what you have the best you can. You learn in the process and can better get that ten when she shows up again. There isn't a pinnacle of success, a moment when one becomes a Don Juan. The game never stops. The only major difference is that the Don Juan becomes game master and the other players react to him rather than him reacting to their actions. But you don't know what number is coming out of the deck next. It could be an eight, it could be a ten, it could even be a queen. Readiness is all.